um, slaughterhouse. Kim, don't go in there. It's a slaughterhouse. <laughs> that Which was. I, I would line. not. I wouldn't. I won't. Would you, would you say that was the best line in the movie? I, I think it was. I don't know. I think that it has a lot of great lines, to be honest. But I appreciate that line. I well, I will say, even though the movie to me was very up and down, it, it was very much like, oh, I love this. Oh, I really hate this. Oh, I love this. Oh, I really hate this. Like that yeah, line, yeah. I was I was laughing really hard at that line when it happened. Um, Especially because everyone's reaction, like they acknowledge, like no, no, that's yeah, well, not. And mm -hmm. honestly, like with a movie like that, this super tongue in cheek, I'm I'm kind of a sucker for when they say the title and be like really on the nose about it. Like anytime a movie does that, I just think that's funny. If if it's done well or like with yeah. good timing, you know. Yeah. So and they did that. So um, yeah. so slaughterhouse. At one point, this was playing at a theater not far from us, yeah. and we briefly talked about like maybe we should go see it, but then we were kind of like. Mm, I don't know. Is it worth the price of a ticket to go yeah, see it? Yeah, yeah. Now you know, you've seen it, do you think it would have been worth seeing in a theater? Yes. I okay. don't think I would have regretted it. Yeah, I don't think that I would have regretted it. I'll say yeah. I'll agree with that. Yeah, I enjoyed um, the movie enough to like say that like I paid to watch it. I didn't obviously, but I would have been fine with that. So if you're watching this review, you're probably aware of this, but it's on Hulu now. So if you have Hulu, you can just watch it, which I had been wanting to see it because of how ridiculous just the idea is. And when you sent me that text and we're like, oh, look, it's on Hulu. I was excited to watch. Like that night I watched it because. I know. remember when you sent me the trailer, I think, for it. I genuinely thought it was a joke. Like <laughs> I thought it was something on TikTok because Cocaine Bear had just come out or something like that they were just joking. And then when you were like, no, that's real. I was like, what? And I wasn't sure what to expect. Like we talked a lot about this recently of like going into a movie, knowing like, do they take themselves seriously? Should I be taking this seriously? Because if they're taking it seriously, this is not going to be good. But I'm really glad that this movie never once took itself seriously and it made it so much better. It felt like, it felt like a movie that was derived from like an SNL sketch. Like this could have been something that started on SNL and then morphed into a movie. Yes. Thing, yes, right? it totally could have. And I did do a little bit of research. I went to like IMDb. They didn't have a trivia because I, I just wanted to know like what, yeah. what's going on. I did find this is on Wikipedia, but I did find it said that the person, there's two writers and one of the writers, this was basically born from the prompt. What is the like, worst idea what is if i had to like write the dumbest movie what yeah. would it be and so knowing that plus the people who the two writers are in the movie oh i didn't know that okay they play bit parts in the movie as well so yeah. i i enjoy it even more sort of reflecting on it knowing that they probably had a really good time writing it mm -hmm. and being in it i love the idea of it like this is the kind of thing where you know you get an idea for something and you just whatever it takes, you're going to make it happen in some form. Yeah. Um, yes. And I think that because of, I mean, you could tell that they loved what they were doing. Just everybody involved with it. Like they loved it because it was just so ridiculous and absurd. Mm -hmm. And it got, to me, it was funny how it just kept getting more absurd. Like the whole idea at yes. the start is, but it just like, to, to the, and we are going to talk about spoilers into this. I'm just going to like put that out there because how can you not address some of the stuff, but the point where the sloth was driving a car. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was so close to texting you, but I couldn't because I was watching it on my phone. But I really want to be yeah. like, uh, is this sloth really driving a car right now? That and he's, <laughs> he's literally like using the phone. He's like clicking buttons. He's typing stuff into social media. He has his own like feed on Instagram. Yeah. Hashtag killer sloth. Like yeah. he, and he's like, taking well, selfies with his victims and things. Yes. And Hashtag last selfies. So like. It yeah, I and I'm saying I, he, but it was a female sloth, right? Like they say that pointedly a couple of times. They're like, she did, she did this, she did that. Like Alfie, the sloth. Like yes, I, you're correct. It is supposed to be a female. I should not have said he. I apologize. No, no, no. Well, it's okay. I was saying it too, but I just it struck me like, oh, that's because it's a sorority, and I don't know if the idea is that like this also is a member of the sorority. Like I don't know if that's what they're what they were kind of going for with it. Like I don't know, but anyway, yeah. So. Do you, do you want to tr take a crack at summarizing the plot? Just like sure, super briefly, sure. So, um, hold on, I gotta fix my bangs again. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to get a haircut. Um, <laughs> so Emily, our protagonist, is getting ready to go back for her senior year of college, and 
really is about the influencing on social media, wants more followers, mm -hmm. wants to beat out this other sorority president girl who's just like one of your stereotypical rich bitch. Uh, and basically it gets presented to her that, hey, one way to, to stand out is to maybe adopt a unique pet. And so the random guy at the mall, which wouldn't be sketchy at all, <laughs> right. suggests to her, hey, I've got a sloth. You know, you should check it out. So she ultimately decides the way to win this election is to adopt the sloth. She adopts him, uh, steals him, actually, because the guy's dead by the time she goes to get the sloth. And there's a he, tiger prowling around the they, apartment. Yes, he's got many, something. many exotic animals, you discover. Right. Yes. Oh, also, the sloth is on anxiety pills. Yes, yes. That's probably my biggest is, gripe with the movie, which we'll talk about, I'm sure. Well, that, yeah, that's a good point. And the sloth is highly intelligent, like, you know, human level intelligence, essentially. I mean, this, yeah, <laughs> this sloth has already killed an alligator and right. is very clearly, yes, of high intelligence, capability. Can navigate I social was, media. Yes, yes. And it never gets explained why, which I think is great. Please don't yeah, tell totally. me. Yeah, totally. Please don't tell me why. Don't justify why the sloth is capable of starting its own Instagram. And so it's a big hit with the sorority. Everybody is super in love with the sloth or they want her to be the new president. So then, you know, incumbent president is like, no, 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 no. We got to take her yeah. out and start right. masking her minions with getting rid of the sloth, which then begins a montage of death. I will yeah, call it. Yeah, yeah. The, so, the, yeah, the sloth is apparently like taking out the competition, it appears. Yeah, it. I mean, honestly, so the final third of this movie, so the final like 30 minutes, I'm not sure what it would be, but basically when the sloth goes into like legit kill mode towards the yes. end of the movie, like, I love that. Like, I thought the final yeah. third of it was really good. Like, at first yes. I was kind of like, eh, this is kind of hit and miss for me, but then I was really into it with the final third because of just how insane it ultimately yes. was so, i agree yeah. the last act is definitely the most enjoyable and i would say because the second act does have this like death montage where i i don't have a problem i don't have a problem with the sloth taking out people to make it so she can win president i have no problem with that my issue is that nobody seems concerned that apparently like eight sorority girls have now gone missing and there still seem to be an abundance of sorority girls like it's right. almost like this mass produced sorority where like <laughs> one goes missing one pops up because when they go to do their president vote later there's like still a pretty balanced side of who wants the old girl versus the new girl so i'm not really sure if if the sloth's murder spree in the second act even did anything right it, it was almost like having a murder spree for the sake of having a murder spree but you're right like i noticed that too of like nobody seems to really care all that much i mean at one point toward the end they do say oh where's whatever like they start kind very of very towards the end yeah very towards the end. But the, there's a lot of people missing for a long mm -hmm. time like i don't know if yes. it's days or a, a day or whatever it, and it's it was probably at least a week because they show they show time passing yeah. And, and these girls, there is a character who who's kind of supposed to be our moral compass, who right. believes that it's wrong to domesticate this wild animal. The sloth has to be returned to its natural habitat, which yeah. apparently the sloth doesn't agree right. because he manages to get her hit by a car. Right. So what did you think about that scene? Did you see that coming? That whole scene with the car? I I did not see that coming. I knew the sloth was going to be after her. I did not think she was going to get hit by a car. It felt very Mean Girls, which is I was about funny. To say, it was like a nod to Mean Girls. That was the first and thing I thought And it is because yeah. one of the writers said that this movie is Mean Girl meets crap, something <laughs> with a little bit of Gremlins, yeah. which I would have said more Chucky, which... They do have a nod to. They say he's a cute. He's a cute Chucky, like right. or she, whatever. So yeah, like, okay, whatever. At least you acknowledge. Um, but yeah, and then and then once once moral compass girl ends up in the hospital, shouldn't die. Yeah. 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 And the, and the girls and I will say the girls all lock themselves in. It's part of their president election night. And I, I will say writing wise, I thought yes, they explained that, that very well. 
their yep. little chant about the sorority and how they have to bond and trust. And so it makes sense they've locked themselves in, like, yeah. and they've gotten rid of their phones. I appreciate the way that their situation was justified. I don't totally understand why the sloth now has to kill everybody. <laughs> It's just it, it's mad. I yes. mean, the whole thing that kicks this off, right, is the sloth somehow gets on Emily's Instagram page or whatever, or Facebook, and sees that uh, sees her with the the guy that kidnapped it, the sloth, right? Like from yes. the, the whole like connection of oh, she must. So be was that supposed to be like oh, she's connected or she doesn't care about? I like was that supposed to be it? I don't, I mean, I, I think that that was just surely the impetus to give him some kind of motive or give her okay. whatever he it was it. supposed to be a motivation, right? It was motivation. Okay. Um, but really, I mean, you know, we haven't gotten into kind of the, I guess the broader message that they've injected into this, but I mean, really this movie seems to me to be about social media really and like influencing well, and some, uh, some other things, but yes, yes. Go ahead. yeah, no, no, it definitely is because when their house mother and which might be my favorite scene. Yeah. Is and she might be my favorite character. She's when my favorite house, character for sure. Yeah, when the house mother is dying and monologuing, and it goes on a little bit too long, but <laughs> monologuing about life, and it's so on the nose that you're like, okay, like that's part of the comedy. It's like, okay, yeah. we get it. That yes, like that is very much the message. But then there's also this like other message of like leaving wild animals in the wild because they start right. this like group about like not domesticating wild animals. And that was another mean girl reference, the fetch thing, right? Yes. So yes. Like, fetch happened, that whole thing. It was. Yeah. Yes. Good job. Good job, Chris. Thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah. It was, it was another mean girls reference. So now, did you, this is kind of a reference because you were mentioning that death scene of that, the house mother or whatever for the sorority. Like, did you ever see zombie land? I don't know if you've seen. Yes. That I remember Bill seen Murray's, Bill Murray's death scene in that that's like super prolonged and like he keeps yes. talking. It, it yes. kind of had shades of that to it. Yeah. Um, which again, played for comedy, but I, I love that scene when he's dying and they're like, do you have any regrets? He goes, maybe Garfield. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Stuff like, yeah. Um, yes. But no, that was my favorite character. But I think I told you my, at least for the, well, yeah, for the bulk of the movie, my least favorite character was kind of the wacky friend. Like some of that worked. But some of it, like, especially for the end when she's got the sword and is, like, really acting kind of off the wall, like, I was just like, I don't, like, this comedy for me is not really hitting, but I don't know. Like, what did you think about that? I mean, I liked it more than you did. Yeah. I did. And and and, and maybe this is a way too deep of a level. I liked the character because she seemed so different from the other sorority girls that I just appreciated representation of someone like that in their sorority, which I think for me made it more enjoyable to watch her character. That, but I, I totally, completely agree with everything you're saying. No, I I agree too with what you're saying about like just somebody different being in yeah. this. But I, the other thing too is like, would they have allowed her to be in the sorority? Like, I don't, I, I mean, maybe I guess if she's friends with somebody who's high ranking, like, I don't know, but it just, you kind of got the sense that like, a lot of them were very like, if you're not exactly like us, then we're not going to be okay with you. But I don't know. I yeah. Don't know. Yeah. And I didn't. Yeah. But I mean, I I'm mean, thinking too deeply about this where a sloth can drive a car in a movie. Like, anyway, like, you know, that's like. Stick shift? I, I think that it was, wasn't it? It's <laughs> I don't even point. know. It was, I, it was. Yeah. He can reach the pedals. We're not even gonna, we're not. Now I will say one thing. the cops. Yeah. <laughs> one character I wish had more purpose was the boyfriend. Yeah. I, but he did deliver the best line or one of the best lines. He, he did. No, he did. I just thought they set up like him coming through the window. And I don't know, maybe that's a nod to scream of like, I'm like, okay. So there's a scene where she's like in her room and I'm like, oh, he's going to show up through the window. Okay, cool. Like they set this up and he doesn't. And I'm like, yeah. okay. So what? Like, I don't really, yeah, see, I didn't really he, understand his purpose. It's like he shows up at the end to kind of be the person to chaperone them out of the building, essentially out of the house. Like, yes, literally kind of he carries one of the friends and that's his, he doesn't do anything else. Yeah. So 
I guess let's talk about the comedic elements because I mean, obviously, this is a comedy. Like even more than being a horror, I think it's a comedy first. And yes, foremost. it is. Um, yes. Now, another question I was going to ask you is, how did you feel about it being rated PG thirteen? Because part of me was like, if it were an R rated movie, it probably would have been more gory. Like it, it had the potential to be more gory. Was there it a lot definitely of had shots? the potential. No, I, I think. And if it had been rated R, I don't know that we would have had as much of the comedy. I think some right. like because I bet it would have been almost too gory to the point where then people would have been like, I don't think this is funny yeah. because of the gore. So I think PG thirteen is an appropriate rating. That I yeah. would yeah. Yeah, I I, I just wish it were a little bit bloodier, but like that's me. I mean, that's just like a preference thing in terms of like I would have you know. definitely I thought there were more opportunities to do like um blood splatter on like the wall. Like right. you know, he's got those fangy claw things like that well, and I thought, some good splatter well one thing i thought they were going to do more with even though it would have intentionally and i guess would have made sense slowed the movie down a lot was like have him move like extra slow with his claws like they do that in one scene like he's going kind of slow but like he's frequently like swiping and starting to move really quickly you know especially yeah. at the end of the movie where he's doing a lot of ninja kind of stuff a lot of yes, that yeah it's a little matrix action yeah. <laughs> but i love just how like maniacal and uh, scheming and cunning he ends up being or she ends up being or whatever toward the end the sloth yeah but but so okay but again from the comedy perspective like I, I laugh pretty consistently throughout the movie like even though I did I so I told you I started watching this at the gym so I'm yeah. on the treadmill running as I'm watching <laughs> this opening scene and this sloth basically like purr laughing as it like kills an alligator and then like so I'm like literally on the treadmill, like laughing and like covering my mouth because I'm like, I probably look like a crazy person who's like laughing while she's <laughs> running. But like, so I, I mean, from the first scene, I'm like laughing. Like I definitely found it to be a humorous movie. Well, and I think one thing they made a very good decision about was not making the Sloth CGI. Like making it yeah. a, like a puppet, essentially. And just because it looked kind of janky, like that added to the humor a little yes. bit. Just the way it moved, that sort of thing. Yes. When it first opened and we saw the Sloth, I was like, this is the Sloth? Like this looks <laughs> ridiculous. But it had to. Because I think yeah. if it looked real, then we would expect the movie to be real. And it's not. There's yeah. so much that's not real. Well, and my my guess would be, I don't, I, and it sounds like there wasn't a lot of information on IBB, but I bet their budget was pretty limited. So like spending a lot of that on a CGI sloth, it probably wouldn't have looked great if they had gone the CGI route, I would bet. So just making something tactile and puppet-like would end up working. Yes. I don't know. My cat is like trying to climb behind the blinds. Don't eat that. Are you sure it's not? Alfie, the sloth, are you sure? 100%? It's not. No, it's my stupid cat trying to chew my blinds. I just threw something at him. He's fine. Um, yeah. He's good. But yeah, I thought it was funny. I did. Yeah, and I, I, and funny too. I don't think it was. And like you said, it's not super gory. So I don't no, no. like. And it's not scary. Like, it's the, fun. So my, my only. And I, this isn't even really a, a gripe, I wouldn't say, but I would say that it gets so absurd at times that, like, it never like fully took me out of it. But it's like, yeah. it's almost like, how far is a, an audience willing to go with this, right? Like, and I think again, I've said it a couple of times, the, the point where it's like driving a car and all of that kind of stuff, like that was like the apex of. This and is not just really like driving the car, following the maps like on the GPS, the GPS, like, like the read. right, yeah. And posting yeah. on social media and all that kind and of stuff. Posting on social media and taking selfies. And I agree. It's like, how far can we go before yeah. the audience is like, this is too much. And I don't know that they ever completely went. Like, I was still in it. Yeah, I was, was still deep. in it. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think part of me wishes it was it were a little bit more of a horror movie, like a true horror movie. But it never would have been scary, right? I mean, like, no. I guess really what I'm asking for is more gore, which I've already mentioned, but like, it's still, it was a good movie. I mean, I was, I was entertained, you know, the whole way through. I will say, even though I think I would have been fine and happy watching this in the theater, I was also totally fine watching it at home. Like, I don't, yeah. you know, I don't think that anything was, was lost and not seeing it on a big screen, no, you know, that sort no, of thing. No, um, no. So what would you say is your favorite movie from, or favorite scene from the whole movie, favorite scene from the whole thing? Oh, that is tricky. I'm trying to think. 
Um, I, mm, what's yours? What's yours? That's also tricky. Uh, so, I, mean, I think the first, the my first response would be that line delivery of "Don't go in there; it's a slaughter house." Like, I don't know why. Like, I just love how on on the nose that is. Like, I just thought it was hilarious, and I think it was because I was watching it kind of late, and I was just getting a little bit delirious and tired, and it just was that much funnier to me because of that. Yeah. Um. But other than that, uh, I don't know. Um. I, oh, I I got it. When he gets <laughs> when the sloth gets hit with the paddle and goes flying out the window. I don't know why, like that looked kind of hilarious to me too. Just the comedy of seeing basically a stuffed animal being thrown through a glass window, like that was yes. funny. Yeah. Yes. I, oh, you know what? I liked when she stabbed it with the tiara. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I like when she stabbed the <laughs> the sloth with the tiara in its head. That was that was good. That was good. Um, I know so it was yeah, favorite I mean, favorite, but I liked that. Well, and we we didn't even talk about like how this sloth is like the Terminator, like it can't be killed. Oh so, like, yeah. So it's shot like six or seven times. It's stabbed yes. multiple times. It has a sword go all the way through it. And you see mm -hmm. blood like pulling away from it and everything when it's lying mm -hmm. on the ground. But yes. clearly it's just indestructible, which is totally fine in a movie like yeah. this. Totally fine. Yeah. I don't even know why. I believe you. I believe that yeah. that's lost is indestructible. So you talked about cocaine bear earlier. What what do you like better, cocaine bear or this? Because we've got two I kind of crazy... totally different movies. You know, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I think Cocaine Bear is a more serious horror movie, even though it's more of a. It's, it's they're both comedies, right? Like I think. I think it's more, it has more substance. Cocaine Bear has more substance. I would right. say. Right, and Slaughterhouse is just silly. Like it's just. Yes. I mean, not that Cocaine Bear doesn't have those moments, but it's more of like a traditional horror movie in some ways. Um, well, but I, I I'm just curious what you would think about that, just given that they're both two kind of crazy animals killing people, sort of thing. Like, I think objectively. Cocaine Bear is the better movie. Yeah. But if I was like hanging out with friends and we wanted like a fun <laughs> movie to watch, I would pick Slaughter House over Cocaine Bear. So to that point, you were just in Florida with some of your friends, right? And you were texting like, oh, we're trying to find a movie to watch. And I, and I was like, oh, Barbarian, blah, blah, blah. But if you had watched this, what would the response to this have been? I because think they don't like horror movies, right? They yeah they like like yeah that my one my 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 friend Julia can handle it I know she can um it was really Hillary who can't and okay. she kept being like I'll leave I'll go somewhere else I'm like that's not the point of going on a trip to get like it's fine but I do and we did end up watching Fatal Attraction which is not a horror I've actually watched, never seen that well we watched the TV series with Joshua Jackson. Oh, okay. So which but it, it it didn't have a ton of gore or anything it was more suspenseful. But I feel like they could have done Slaughter House because there wasn't a lot of gore. Nothing about it was like disturbing. Every death was like, excuse me, it was like ridiculous. Right. I'm not even sure how some of these people died based on. Yeah. Well, and I mean, the whole scene in like the shower, like that whole yeah. thing, like, I guess it electrocuted all of them at once or a lot of them at one time or something. Yes. Is what happened yes. there. Yeah. Okay. And like each here, and here's where I would say like these people just had fun because I think if you really wanted to deep dive and you took like each death, could you connect it to another horror like franchise? Hmm. Because all the deaths are deaths are a little different. There's one person whose freaking face got carved. It looked very Joker like, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And so that's where I'm like, are they just trying to do that? Like give a little nod to each potential movie that they pulled from. Yeah. So, so what would our, I mean, I guess my final verdict here would be, um, you know, I liked it a lot. I had a lot yeah. of fun with it. I wouldn't say that I loved it. Like, because again, no. in retrospect, like some of the humor I thought was hysterical. Some of it, like the very first third of the movie, maybe where they're kind of in, necessarily. So introducing the sorority and, and kind of going through their social media, like, Oh, this person's got, Eight thousand. Yeah. I was just like, let's get going with this. Like, you know, that yeah, kind of that was that went on too long. We didn't need but to know did, And I guess that it was there to kind of really put the foundation down about like, oh, we're trying to say something about this societal need to be liked and to be followed yeah. and all of that kind of stuff or whatever. Um, but yeah, like I mean, I think if you're looking for a really dumb horror comedy to watch on TV one night, like this is totally that yeah. and totally fine, and you can have a good time watching it. And like a self-aware dumb yeah. horror movie. Cause like I think about those movies, and we've talked about this a lot, with like that don't realize how bad they are. 
<laughs> which makes it worse. Like this movie never tries to be anything that it is not trying to be something else, which I think makes it better. And so that's where like, I totally recommend watching it. It's fun. Like it's entertaining. Why not watch a sloth yeah. kill a bunch of people? Did you ever, I think I've, we've mentioned this movie before, but have you ever seen Thanks Killing? Have you seen that I've before? not. I've not. We've talked about it. I know. I need to watch it. There are, there are a lot of parallels between that and Slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse. Okay. Except that Thanks Killing is legit, like, profanity-laced horror blood. Like, I mean, it's much more of, like, a horror movie. Yeah. And honestly, a lot of the humor in that also does not work. Like, but I think, I, actually, now that I'm saying this, I think Slaughterhouse is funnier than Thanks Killing. Thanks Killing is just an idea like this, where you've got a talking turkey who goes on a homicidal rampage. Yeah. That, this is better done overall, yes, I would say. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Speaking of, and I know we've been talking about like all these movies we want to, we want to review, like Carrie and a lot of other ones, Trick or Treat. Have you seen the trailers for Thanksgiving, like the Eli Roth horror movie Thanksgiving? I've only seen like the poster for it. I've not seen the actual trailer or anything. It looks pretty solid. Like, I mean, obviously it's not out yet, but I think at some point we're going to have I to mean, I definitely want to see it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, like it's totally, I, you can tell that what they're trying to do is to make like a definitive Thanksgiving horror movie. Like that's what they're, because right now that doesn't really exist other than Thanksgiving yeah. and Thanksgiving yeah. too, but both of those are pretty subpar, honestly. My friend so, did know. ask me, is there an Easter horror movie? Did we talk about that? I feel like we talked about I know, that. I feel, like, I feel like we have, but I was like, I don't think there is. No, we I'm, looked and there were some like really yeah. terrible looking movies about a killer bunny and mm -hmm. maybe some other stuff. I don't know, but I don't think there is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, I too. Cool. So what? What are are we doing? Carrie next? I think that's what we had talked about. Neither right? did you carry or trick or treat. Okay. Okay. We can uh, do either one. I just watched trick or treat. So if you, but I can also watch Carrie like anytime. I mean, I've seen Carrie so many times that I. And, well, the actress who played the mom in Carrie just died. Was that um not Suzanne's? No, it wasn't. No, no, no. I was about to say Suzanne Somers. That's not right. Who? I don't even remember. Maybe the... Lori. Was that her name? My mom. Maybe. Because Carrie was played. Was it Sissy Spacek that played actual Carrie? Yes. Okay. And then. Uh, Piper Lori. Okay. She played the mom. She just died. So. That would be good. I've seen that one so many times that I don't really probably need to rewatch it to review it. Okay. But I but I would need to rewatch Trick or Treat. We can do. Why don't we kind of lead up to Halloween with maybe like next week sometime we could do Carrie and then right before Halloween we'll do Trick or Treat as that would be kind of appropriate given yeah. the time. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So Slaughter House, if you have yes. Hulu. Yeah, totally watch it. Definitely. I mean, don't expect like anything magnificent, but just have fun with it. And you have can't fun. Be disappointed. It'll yeah. be a good time. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. remember, don't go in there. It's a slaughter house. <laughs> Enjoyed that line delivery, Kim. Wasn't that good? That was it. Is that what that was? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oscar okay. worthy. Thank you. Um, well, everybody have a good night. Thanks for watching. And we'll be back to talk about Carrie soonish, very soon. Soonish, yes.